Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to begin turning a blank that has a very special place in my heart and I'll show you why. You might remember I made a whole bunch of these chaos blanks and on my other channel, What You Do in Bob, I had a blank sale and I sold almost all of them. There's only two or three left. One of the things I also sold was all of my cutoffs because when you make these chaos blanks, you'll remember it's just a big old mass of blanks and you're cutting them at an angle. And there's always angular pieces that get, you know, that you just, you can't make a whole blank out of. They're too short. So I put all those pieces in a box and I sold them. And a good buddy of mine, Robert Dedinsky over at Crosscut Creations, I will link to him in the comments below. He bought that box of blanks. And a couple of weeks ago, he did a video where he cast my chaos cutoffs. And here's the blank. This is the top of it. But as you rotate the blank, you can see the embedded pieces of the chaos blank. Now, I watched Robert do the casting and I immediately told him, when that's done, I want to buy one of those blanks because I want to turn it. So I purchased this blank from Robert and I just received it yesterday. I'm super excited about it. It's, it's been over a week since he turned it. So the resin should be fully hardened and ready to, or fully cured and ready to turn. So today we're going to begin uh, preparing this blank to turn to a pin. I just finished picking a kit for my hybrid chaos blank. We're going to go with a Junior Joshua Rollerball. This is an antique silver and it came from the classic nib. I really love these kits. I'm ready to go ahead and get this blank marked so that I can cut it and prepare to drill it for tubes. And taking a look at the blank, my favorite part of the blank is right here. So I want this to be the body of the pin and then this section is going to be the cap. I've got two tubes with this kit. One is quite a bit larger in diameter. That is the cap of the pin. So we're going to center the tubes somewhere in the blank right over the chaos pieces to ensure that we get the best or the most uh, of the uh, chaos pieces showing in our pin as possible. I think that's going to be pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this right there, right there. I'm leaving just a little bit of overhang on either end. The resin is the overhang on both ends. So what we'll do is we'll cut down the middle. Each tube will square perfectly with this center cut. And then I will cut off the excess resin at the end of the blank. Let's just get these marked. And I'm ready to take this blank over to the bandsaw and get it cut to length. I brought the section of blank that I've marked for the body of the pin over to the drill press and you can see my little center line right there. So I know this is the center of the blank. I've got a 10.5 millimeter bit chucked up. First thing we want to do is find the center of our blank. You notice I test all four corners and the reason why I'll show you. Take a look at that. Can you see that? Right there, the blanks, I'm sorry, the lines all cross. There we go, that's much better. And right in the center, that's the true center of the blank. Had you only done two sides, you'd have been off on the left or the right. I almost forgot to put a dimple in the center of my blank. So we're gonna find the center with this punch. There we go. Now we can bring the point of our brad bit down and we can drop it right into that dimple and we're ready to drill. Chucked up a 12.5 millimeter bit and we're ready to go ahead and drill the cap blank. There's my center line. So we'll just perform the same procedure that we did on the body to find our center. Okay. 
and we're ready to drill. We have a really nice entrance hole there and a really nice exit hole. Being that this particular kit uses two separate tube sizes, I had to find a larger tube in my punch set to work with the cap blank. The body of the pin will actually use the same size punch as all of my Sierras use, uh, and they are normally a 27-64 inch tube. So we are ready to go ahead and square our blanks, and we'll swap this punch out after we finish squaring the body blank. Got my blank chucked up. I'm going to be turning the cap section first, then we'll come back and turn the body. We're going to use the skew for the entire process. Well, I did not feel a catch or anything, but um, because I'm turning in grain, I guess I turned a chunk right out. All of a sudden, I started, I was cruising across the blank, nice smooth cuts, looking good. I mean, take a look at that piece of wood. Everything was looking great, and all of a sudden, I started seeing brass, and I thought, what the heck? So I uh, shut the lathe off, and sure enough, this piece of wood here, I just took an entire just chunk out of it. Didn't even feel it. I really hate that I lost that piece of wood there. And since this already is a hybrid, I've got this gold powder that was sent to me. Uh, I cannot remember what it is, but I'm gonna use some of it. And we're gonna go ahead and fill that little area right there. I don't remember who sent it to me and I don't remember what it is. I've had it for quite a long time. I'm just gonna basically put some in there. Then I'm gonna put a little thin CA on it. That thin CA will soak down in there. Just let it run around the blank. We can always turn it off. Thin should dry rather quickly. And then we'll fire the lathe back up and continue turning. I can see that it's kind of it's kind of, as, it, as it's getting wet, it's kind of soaking down in there, kind of like dirt does when it packs. So I'm gonna put just a little more on there, try to fill the hole just as best as possible. A little more CA. Just kind of rocking it. That thin CA is gonna run like water, so I'm just rocking it back and forth to let it run left and right. Looks pretty good now, it's not sinking in as bad. Let's give this a shot of accelerator and let's get back to turning.
Looks to me like that may have worked. If you look at the blank, there's none of the CA glue or the run that uh, you know came around the blank as we put the CA on it. Got a nice, flat, smooth finish. It's a brass color. Once again, when it comes to hybrid blanks, I always forget to paint my tubes. So you can kind of see some of the brass tube through the blank. However, having this brass accent here in this strange Frankenstein hybrid blank, it's not too bad. I got a great fit at the tubes. I'm happy with that. This blank is ready to be sanded. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through the grits. Actually, we're gonna, we're gonna clean it up with some DNA. I'm gonna then put one thin coat of CA on here. Then we're gonna sand through the grits up to 400. We'll pause at that point. We'll turn the front half of the pin, get it sanded, and then we will uh, put a CA finish and micro mesh them together. Since we have multiple different types of wood here, the end grains of multiple different types of wood, we've got this uh, CA finish with this uh, powder, as well as the resin. I'm gonna go ahead and use a block, and I'm gonna block sand it because I can fill a couple of little, let's call them tool marks in here, but high and low places where, you know, we left a hard piece of wood and went into the soft resin. This will allow me to uh, clean that up and get it nice and square, flat, all the way around. I made one pass, now I'm gonna make a second pass just looking for the deep scratches, and I'm just trying to just get rid of them. You can see them starting to kinda of disappear as we make back and forth scratches. It's really bad right here at the end. Looking pretty good. There's a few here and there. As you wipe the blank off, you'll find them. You just want to keep working them until you eliminate as many of them as possible. Really watch down by your bushings because that's where you'll get those scratches. And they're a little harder to get out for some reason, but they are very noticeable in the finished blank. All right. Blank looks pretty good. I'm ready to go to the next grid of paper. I just finished sanding to 400. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe with a little denatured alcohol. We'll clean it again before we uh, actually put a finish on it, but I just want you to be able to see the blank. And it was really covered in a lot of fine dust. Not too bad. It's gonna look pretty good, I think, once it's cleaned up, polished up. There's our patch right there. Doesn't look bad at all. All right. Let's go ahead and get the body section of the pin on the lathe. We'll get it turned, we'll get it to this point, and then we'll start thinking about what we're gonna do with finish. This end of the blank is proving to be a little bit tricky because I'm coming across like this and the grain is facing like this. So I'm lifting that grain up and tearing it out. So I've got to be really careful. I've got to try to turn the pin almost completely from this end and then be able to come back and whittle down uh, this resin so that I can, I still have plenty of room to get rid of that tear out, but if I don't turn this way, we're gonna, we're gonna suffer the entire time with uh, turning this blank.
That was a difficult turn. I've got a lot of uh, wavy spots in here. I was fighting, fighting grain going both directions. I still have a little chip out there, but it's still a little bit high. Um, I think I can clean that up with my sandpaper. I got just a, just a hair of a lip right there at the bushing. I normally like to take that all the way down, but uh, this was difficult to turn. That's kind of cool there. The uh, Paduke is sort of fading away and some of the wood behind it is showing through. That's kind of a neat feature. I'm right down to the bushings on this side. Nothing really tore out, but man, this was this was tough to turn. Uh, so we're going to level this out with a little sandpaper, especially right there. That's that one spot. Just It was tough coming off of that um, resin, and then I'd hit that hard blank right there. So I've got myself a little bit of a divot, but I think we can clean this up. Once again, we'll employ the uh, blank trick, and you'll see here. See the scuff areas and all the shiny areas? There's a lot to be worked out on this blank. So uh, I'm just going to shut the camera off. It'll probably take a couple of pieces of paper to level this one. And then we'll start working on removing the scratches. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like after I work my way down through to 400 grit. Go ahead and clean up the lower blank for you. Get a little look at it before we start finishing. Looks like there might be one little pockmark there. Maybe that's an air bubble. See if anything comes out of there. Yeah, I think we got this little air bubble there. Must have been uh, trapped under the wood or behind the wood when the resin went in. It's cleaning out really well though. We're going to need to fill that and I really hate that because I just finished sanding and that means I'm gonna to have to sand the blank again but I have no choice if you don't feel that you will see it so let's get the medium CA one drop we're just gonna let it sit there and dry I'm not gonna use activator because when you do this I've used activator in the past and what I've learned is when you've got a bubble like this that activator will instantly seal the surface of that bubble you touch it, it's dry. It's even it's even hard, you can't press it, it won't it won't compress. So you think, okay, great, I'm ready to turn. You start turning, your tool takes that that little uh, top layer off, there's CA under, and it throws it everywhere. Gets on your camera, your shirt, everything. So it's best if we let this dry naturally for a little while. It looks good, I don't see any air bubbles in it. So once it's done drying, uh, we're gonna make one pass with the tool and and maybe I don't even know if I'll make one pass with the tool I may try just to sand that off but it is a pretty high bubble let me see if maybe I can level it out a little bit I use this screwdriver there we go I was just hoping by taking some of the the uh, hump out of it that I could sand it down see that's nice from the side you don't even hardly see it and I can't see the hole so we're gonna let that dry and I should be able to go back to 120 grit work my way down to 400 I'll just take a little piece and I'll just work the center section make sure I don't leave any scratches we'll clean that up and then we'll be, we'll be ready to uh, get a finish on both of these blanks I just finished sanding the blank down I have not cleaned it with denatured alcohol yet you can see a shiny spot right there. There's no divot, you can't feel anything, but it's just a shiny spot where um, the CA glue was put into the blank. When I finish this blank, that will completely disappear with uh, additional layers of CA. Go ahead and put the blank on the mandrel between nonstick bushings. I'm going to use some denatured alcohol. We're gonna clean both blanks thoroughly. I'm gonna put a coat of thin CA to sort of seal the wood. Then we're going to come back and aggressively micro mesh these blanks um, to, you know, polish up the uh, alumilite as best as we can. Uh, we'll let them dry probably overnight to make sure any moisture that might have snuck by, because this is in grain, uh, gets a chance to dry. And then we'll finish, we'll put the finish on them uh, sometime during the day tomorrow.
the blanks are drying nicely. When you use a paper towel like that uh, to wipe the DNA on the blank, sometimes the paper towel will leave little fuzzies. I guess the blank can catch it, you know, with the ingrain or whatever. I just use the tape that I'm going to use to protect my finger from the CA glue and wipe the blank with that because there's no oil in the tape. There's no residue of any kind, so you can wipe away all those little fuzzies and you don't have to worry about uh, you know anything from your finger any natural oils getting on the blanks now we're just going to get a nice coat of thin on these really make some pop <laughs> just that one coat uh, we'll let this dry a little bit and then we'll be able to aggressively micro mesh our blanks the ca has had plenty of time to dry now i'm going to go ahead and aggressively micro mesh these blanks with water. I want to take the CA finish off the surface of the blank, but hopefully the ingrain soaked in the CA, so that will kind of help protect the blanks from the moisture. I just finished the micro mesh. The blank looks really good. I don't see any scratches down around the edges or anything. It looks nice from end to end got one little dimple right there in the uh, fill, an air bubble that uh, has popped up. I don't think that's going to cause too much of a problem. It'll fill easily. Next step is we're just going to let these dry. I want to make sure the wood, and the wood doesn't feel wet because it had a layer of CA on it, but I am sure being ingrained it drank a little bit of that moisture. So we're going to let this blank set and dry. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll clean it thoroughly because you see the paduke, the white, that's slurry. We'll be able to clean. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and clean it now and while that is still a bit damp. Let's see if we can get some of that out of there. There's no sense in letting that dry. It'll be harder to clean out. I'm just going to work with, with the grain as best as I can. That looks better. Flip this blank over. And these will get cleaned again since they're setting for a couple days or however long it takes me to get back to them. I will clean them again. And uh, as I do, uh, we'll then put a coat of CA on them. This blank has been setting for two days. It appears to be nice and dry. I have no reason to believe that it's not. And I'm ready to go ahead and start my CA regimen. Before I do, I'm going to clean these with some denatured alcohol. And then we're going to start applying layers a thin CA. The blank's almost dry, and pretty much any time you do wood, uh, you clean wood with a paper towel, you'll have some little paper towel fuzzies on there. I found that once I put the tape on my finger, there's no oil from my finger going to be transferred to the blank, and the tape does a nice job of knocking those little fuzzies down. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to grab my thin CA and we're just going to start applying CA finish. I love Paduke when it gets CA on it. Just look how that thing, it just is so orange and gorgeous. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the regimented five coats of thin on here. And then we're going to jump up and start putting medium CA on here until the blanks have a perfect level smooth surface. They look pretty darn good, except I saw a spot right there. There's a little bit of a kind of a divot. Maybe it might have been some tear out. I can't really tell, but I'll, I'll build that up with uh, multiple coats of medium. And then whenever we micro mesh it down, you'll never see it. I'll come back and show you what the blank looks like once I get the CA finish on it. I've got the CA glue finish on the blank. I think it looks pretty good. Um, I ended up shooting a little activator on the last coat. I don't like to do that, but I needed it to go ahead and dry. Um, you'll notice, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but <laughs> the end of the blank is, is just like, you, there is no gap between the blank and the bushing. So I rubbed a lot of CA off onto these bushings. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove these blanks from the mandrel. We're going to break the bushings off. You'll see what I mean in a second. Oops, let me back that up just a little bit more. There we go. There's one. Take a look at that fingernail on there. There's the other. We got to get this over to, I'm going to leave it like this because this is the 
This was the center part of the blank, so I'm going to lay it aside just like that. Let's go ahead and get this one off. Okay, this is the cap. Ooh, that one came first. And then this one. And I noticed, you probably didn't see it, but it was like a little streamer on the edge of this. Uh, and I'm going to grab a little bit more stick fast because I think the CA glue might have... Uh, it, some of it might have gotten down into the blank or into the brass tube uh, because it was still kind of stringy. So what I'm going to do now is head over to my belt sander. And we're going to get these sanded off. And then, yep, you can see the CA right there starting to form as it got down into the tube. Uh, kind of see that. We may have to use a file to clean that out. Sometimes with the larger tubes, that'll happen. Um, this was the center. So let's, let's make a mental note. Whoa. Oh, there you can see it. That's perfect. So we'll be able to line that up. Yeah, perfect. Let's get these over to the disc sander. I'm going to get these fingernails cleaned off. We'll bring them back, get them on the turning bushings, and then we're going to start the process of micro meshing. got the blank back on the turning bushings. I'm still so disappointed at myself for not painting the tubes, but we're ready now to go ahead and micro mesh. I've got a vibration there I need to adjust. Let me take a peek at that. I went ahead and took the, the first micro mesh I never get too aggressive with because you don't want to destroy that CA finish and it will take it right down. Uh, probably about the first four or five I'll go easy with. And then when I get to the final pads, we'll really start to put the pressure on and uh, really buff and polish. So I'm going to shut the camera off, finish up the micro mesh, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like momentarily. Take a look at how this blank shines. All I've done is micro mesh it. We have not even buffed it yet. That's why I'm kicking myself on the tube. If I had painted that tube, this thing would just blow your eyes out. It would be so incredibly bright. I love it. All right, let me get the uh, body of the pen on here, and we'll go ahead and micro mesh that. And... Uh, see what it looks like. Take a look at the shine. I, I love Paduke. It's so beautiful. Just take a look at that shine. Isn't that incredible? I'm going to get these on the mandrel uh, and then I'll put them in the lathe and I'll put wax on both of them because I didn't put wax on the, uh, the cap blank. So we'll go ahead and get them on the mandrel. I'll wax them. We'll pull it out, pull the mandrel out, put the buffing wheels in and uh, let that wax haze up and we'll get these buffed. And I think they're going to look incredible. I'm going to put a little bit of my uh, Renaissance wax on here. The timing is perfect. I need this wax to haze up. And as I was getting the wax out of the cabinet, I got called in for dinner. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply the wax, go in and eat. It'll get plenty of time to haze up. When I come back out, I will go ahead and buff these blanks down. I bumped the lathe speed up just a little bit and we're ready to go ahead and buff these blanks. Let's take a look at these blanks. Look how that wood just pops. That's what kills me, <laughs> the gold behind there, or the brass. But take a look at that. The wood is insane. Beautiful. See, things like that, that's what bothers me. I'm really sorry that I did not paint these tubes. I know I've said it multiple times, but it's just killing me now because I saw how these blanks turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had an amazing time turning these blanks. I am not going to press these into a kit, at least not right away, uh, they're, but they're beautiful. And I know uh, I spoke with Robert the other day via an instant message. Um, if you are interested in some of these blanks, contact Robert. I can't remember if he said Instagram or Facebook. I think he said over on Instagram, but to Crosscut Creations, contact him wherever you can find him. Tell him you're interested in one of these blanks. And uh, I know we had several made up, but I know he'd be willing to make some more. So give him a holler and get yourself some. And don't be like Bob. Paint your tubes. <laughs> okay, guys, I'd really like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. 
Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.